Okay, game two. Let's see if we can redeem ourselves from that embarrassing loss. We don't ever talk about that last game. It never happened. It never, ever, ever, never happened. Um, let's see. Do I want to... This will put his pawns in a weird spot. I don't want to keep wasting moves, though, making his pawns dance around. Um, yeah, I don't know what the correct line for the uh, Philidor defense is, but I think that's okay. I think that's okay. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I'll push uh, h3 just in case he wants to put his uh, knight on g4 there. Okay. I don't quite follow pawn e5. I don't, I don't understand that move, but... Um, Maybe I'm just not meant to understand it. <laughs> I think he's going to play b5 next. I think he's going for b5. Hmm. Interesting. I could go g5 with the bishop, but I don't think that's that great of a move. I think I'll just get the rooks into play. I think he's going to go here. I think he's going to go pawn b5. Yeah, okay, so we saw that coming. And then I'm pretty sure he's just going to go... Yeah, I feel like I need to attack at this point. No, I need to get this to safety, obviously. Yeah, a bit of a bummer. I kind of blocked my bishop in here. Well, I think this is the only reasonable move. Hmm. Okay. Okay, okay. I suppose at this point we have to take something. Right? I mean... Every move is a losing move, right? So we might as well take something, right? I mean, he can always retake with the rook here. I'm guessing he'd probably, I mean, he'd probably use the pawn. And then I would just push up, but... I mean, he's opened up his defense on the H file for the king here, so maybe I just open up his defense a little bit more. I know I'm down material, but I, I mean, his rooks are not connected and he's got... Um, only one pawn in front of his king. I think I can push d5 now. Hmm, interesting. I could push d5. I mean, I have basically two attackers. Or maybe I just focus on developing everything first.
I think I'll just focus on developing everything first. Um, I don't really want to trade, but it looks like he does want to. So... Hmm, let's think about this. I think I'll just push d5. He's only got one defender for d5 and... Okay, ah. Well, I don't... Yeah. I think I should have just traded knights there. I do have this, and then I can take his queen, but that's not great. Maybe I take the uh, h5 pawn. Well, this is not an active threat. I have an idea. Wait, I don't want to stack my pawns anymore, huh? Gonna be really awkward pawns taking this. I think I'll just take a pawn. I do have the option of taking his queen here. I think what I'll do is move my queen to e2 after this. I'm surprised he didn't go for that. Okay, so he basically wants to get the queen over here. And I don't really want him to do that. I think that was a slight misplay on his end. I'm happy to trade here. I don't want him to get his queen um, here. Actually, yeah, so if he, if he puts his queen here, um, I pretty much just lost. Oh, this is GG again. I need to respect these threats a little bit more. I don't think there's anything I can do to stop this at this point. So this is mate in one. I see what he did. So he basically didn't retake with his pawn on uh, e5 there, so he could put his queen here. So that was a good move by him. Is there anything I can do to get a defender here? I think this is the opposite flipped situation of what happened, um, I think, like two or three games ago. So clearly, I haven't learned anything. <laughs> I guess I can block with the knight, huh? If he goes g5, I can at least block. That's probably my only hope. Okay, I kind of saw that coming. Okay, so he can take. Really need to get my queen out. So he's gonna take, I can take. So I'll remove this threat for now. This is protected. Okay, so he'll take here, maybe. Let's see, so if he takes, no, even then, let's see. Then he can just take with his rook. You didn't have to cut me off.
Okay, pawn f4. I think he'll go for the check. And then really I can only run to h1. And then he gets a queen from his pawn. Well, this is just plain checkmate. So I think he may take with his rook here. Okay, I was kind of expecting that. Um, this might be my only chance. No. So he has a checkmate on g2 with his queen. This looks like a bit of a trap. So I'm not going to go there. I can't block anymore. I think I have to go h1, trade queens. Um, I do have two defenders, and yeah, GG. <laughs> I'm just on a hot losing streak. <laughs> Let's see where we went wrong there. Ooh, 61. Yeah, really, these last two games have just come down to one blunder. It's a bit of a bummer, but oh well. The opponents are playing good, so what can I say? Okay, book move, book move. I think this was too aggressive. It's important to get your pieces off their starting squares into the action. True, that's what we tried to do. So moving there was the best move. This activates a knight. I thought this move was okay, just to protect the pawn. Yes, so... Maybe the pawn move was too early. This provides an escape square for your king. Okay, that's fine. So that was an inaccuracy. So I should have punished it by moving a pawn to a4. Interesting. Advancing the pawns in front of the kings can compromise a king's safety. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Your bishop is ready to be developed in an active square. Yup. Interesting. I didn't think this was such a bad move. You permitted the opponent to eventually win material. This is the best way to win a knight. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. Looks like he had like three great moves. Yeah, I didn't think there was anything better here. Oh, that's what the engine would have done too. That's good to know. And he's really far up ahead here. So I guess pushing d5 was better. Or excuse me, d4. Since I had uh, way more attackers on d4. This is the strongest option, huh? You followed a great chess principle and developed a new piece. Thank you. This offers the exchange. Yeah, I really should have went for this because um, this really ruined my pawn structure in front of the king. And I think that's kind of where it really fell apart for me. Interesting. So he would have just captured back like this, could have captured like this. Even then, he's just so far up ahead here. Hmm. Interesting. That was a free pawn. Yeah, true. I personally feel like not um, taking the trade here was worse than the, the rook move to e1, but that's just from my noob perspective, but, well, plus he was already up a bishop here too, so, that really was the only sensible move, huh, free pawn, not the best, yeah, I was unsure about this one with the double stacked pawns here, I thought about moving the king to um, a green square, but it just felt really unnatural. Maybe I could have like 
push these two pawns up and then try to run this way or something with the king. But even then, I think that would have been too slow. I was kind of expecting him to um, take the pawn here. Yeah, now that I look at this, um, he offered the trade here, but really... I could have attacked his bishop with the pawn here, so this makes sense. So I think that kind of would have forced him to run, and that really would have messed with his plan. So, because here, really, what what could he do? So he would take. That's what the engine recommends, huh? I guess at that point it wouldn't really matter, because then he just has uh, another another good move here. That puts a lot of pressure on my king side. Hmm. Um, let me read these. This is a this is the way to win a pawn. This threatens to force eventual checkmate. Yep, that's what ended up happening. You allowed the opponent to eventually uh, opponent to force eventual checkmate. You ignored an opportunity to win a bishop. I did, did I? What does the engine want? Interesting. It wants me to block this in. What would have happened if I went here? Oh, it's even worse. Oh, that's just mating too. All right, because this and this. Queen g5, and then queen g2. Hmm, couldn't I protect that, though? Yeah, I thought I could make something happen by blocking here, but I guess he just had mate in three. Hmm. Great defense, but it was mate in two, so it was kind of all over anyway. So the pawn h4 is a miss, and it actually got rid of his ability to get mate in two, which is interesting. I didn't quite see that. Okay, so I did that. And what comes next? Okay, so that was the best move. So he doesn't have mate in two here anymore, which is good. And he performed the right move here. Ah, I see. So defend f2 with the queen. That makes sense. But even then, wouldn't he just have mate? Let me see here. f4 is an inaccuracy. You permitted the opponent to eventually win a queen. Hmm. I think he had other plans in mind. This is the way to win a queen. Really, it wanted me to take. Oh, maybe. Oh, okay. I guess I um, calculated that a little bit wrong. I was thinking he would, um, if I captured this pawn, he would go here. But then I guess I did have the option to run. Uh, yeah. And then what do we do next? Yeah, king e1. Yeah, that's kind of a forced move. And then he can put eyes on my queen. What would I? What could I really do here? Pawn f5. Interesting. What would I realistically play in this position, though? I think if it were just me, I'd probably go here if I was playing this position. And then um, I think he would take this, and then I would just do something like offer the queens or whatever to at least try to keep the game going. But even then, I would be down so much material here. But um, yeah, good game by my opponent. What was the thing that I really took away from this game, though? What I don't get why um, 
what I don't get was that why this was such a bad blunder. Because um, it just seemed like a developing move, and there wasn't really like an active threat. Maybe the fact that his queen and his bishop were pointing to g5 should have been a sign. Um, and that maybe I needed to just protect some of these green squares, or dark squares, whatever. But um, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe you guys can tell me why this is such a bad move. And then what was the other thing that I learned? I think I overextended my um, light square bishop at the beginning here, and it wasn't really worth doing all this uh, pawn stuff here because he was eventually going to win this bishop anyway. And then I kind of blocked it in as well from escaping. And what was the other takeaway? Yeah, in this position, I think the big take big takeaway was um, to do this trade here. Yeah, I think that was my other takeaway. I think if the game got to this position, there would have been at least some hope. Um, even if he were to, you know. So what would I do here? Probably fall back. I'd probably defend uh, h4, realistically. Even then, I think he would push here to try to open this up too. Hmm. What would I do? Maybe here. And I did have a free pawn at that point. Hmm. Even this position is pretty bad. Well, it's cool. I made a couple mistakes there, but um, this is a fun game. I uh, learned some things there. Don't overextend the bishop. Protect your king side. And uh, apparently don't. Um, throw your rook onto e1 if your opponent has a lot of threats on your king side. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.